Coming up on this episode of Fresh Web Dev, we take you all the way from activation to deactivation of your plugin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Fresh Web Dev. I'm your host, Dan. And I'm Scott. And Scott, we've been looking at taking you through a big tutorial of how to create your very own WordPress plugin. Last time, we talked about creating custom short codes, what that would look like. You can see that video um, prior to that on our YouTube channel or on our blog post for it. What are we talking about today, Scott? Today, we're going to talk about hooks again. Again. Well, not really again. Yeah, yeah. These are activation and de deactivation hooks. Okay. And these are kind of some special hooks that you can use in your plugin to kind of get everything set up uh, and then maybe, you know, on deactivation, you know, do some certain things so as well. So. So, so activation and deactivation meaning when I, I mean, pretty obviously when I activate a plugin or when I deactivate the plugin itself, what happens? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yep. Right. So, um, so we definitely have talked about hooks before. Right. These are kind of special mm -hmm. though. Like I said, um, they're only used within plugins mm -hmm. and um, there's also a little bit uh, more to this. There's actually an uninstall hook that we'll uh, kind of okay. go over at the end as well. Okay. So very cool. And, and, and we talked about add action earlier, right? The add underscore action. Commit. Yes. How come that, that doesn't work here specifically? Mm -hmm. The reason is, is because uh, when a plugin is activated or deactivated or uninstalled, uh, a different process goes on oh, within okay. WordPress, mm -hmm. and you cannot simply use add action to kind of hook hook into when a plugin is activated, for instance, because of the way that WordPress handles it. Okay. So, um, so some of the uses you might want to yeah. use this for, um, you may want to check, you know, different versions of, of the installed software on the server, PHP, right. MySQL, something like that, and say, well, we need this version, so we're going to halt the activation. Um, you might want to output some messages to the users right. or administrators, like, hey, thanks for installing right. my thanks plugin. Installing and, plug -in. um, Donate, please. You know, yeah, make sure you check this out, <laughs> blah, 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 whatever it might be. Uh, and then, of course, on deactivation or uninstalled, depending on your particular setup, you might want to remove any options or settings that you have uh, in the database. So but, basically cleaning up your mess sort of kind of thing yeah, in a sense. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So getting to your point on why yeah. we can't just use the uh, add action, when a plugin is activated, mm -hmm. all the active plugins in WordPress are loaded, okay. and then the plugin that's being activated is loaded. But it's kind of like in its own little like sandbox or its okay. own little type of environment. So WordPress first checks to make sure that the plugin can be activated there's no errors php errors or any function calls that are you know wrong uh, and then if that's okay uh it makes sure and it'll give you a little bit of a warning for instance if your plugin outputs any data that it's not supposed to uh wordpress will, will put a little warning and say hey this plugin outputted uh, output some stuff uh we need, you need to make sure that your site's going to be okay um so if all that passes uh, and even if your plugin does output a little bit of data when it really shouldn't, um, the plugin is then activated, but the page is then immediately redirected to show you that the plugin's activated. So you never really get that chance to say, to get that add action in there to say, hey, my plugin's been active, you know, I wanna do something. So that's why they created these special hooks. Right, because if you do it before, what ends up happening is nothing really happens. They don't get to see anything because it, it says installing the plugin or activating, and then it says plugin installed. What would you like to do? And that's where we can have problems. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then you're redirected right yeah, away, yeah, and then you're your right action's right not going to work. Mm -hmm. So um, just we'll go over this quick. Uh, register activation hook is the actual function okay. instead of add underscore action okay. um, that you'll use here. And again, this registers the function to be run when the plugin's activated. Um, there's also register deactivation hook, which is when the plugin is deactivated by the user. Okay. Um, and what this does, uh, uh, what this plugin actually takes in is two parameters. One, um, okay. similar to add action, but a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is the file, and this is the, the path to the actual plugin file or your main okay. plugin file. Right. There is a magic constant in PHP. Uh, which is basically a constant that's set up by PHP, and you can use it to reference the current file. It's a double underscore 
capital file double underscore and i'll provide all the notes so you'll see that in the definitely video, so. and most often i'd say probably like 99 percent of the time you're going to use this magic constant to say we want to register our activation hook on this file or which is the main file sure. of the plugin the second um, parameter that this register activation hook function takes in is the function name. So similar to your add action, this is you know what's going to happen on this particular hook. So you put a function name in there, and whatever you might you know want to take place will then go ahead and and take place when the plugin's activated. So in our case, getting back to kind of the shared plugin. Uh, Share social sharing plugin. Whoops. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Say that three times fast. Yeah. We go ahead and we set an option. Mm -hmm. The reason we set an option um, is because of that redirect. So I'll kind of explain that now. Our plugin gets activated. We set an option. Then when our page is loaded for the very next time, we check to see if that option is set. If it is set, then we go ahead and now put a welcome message to the user that says, hey, welcome to simple social sharing. Thank you for taking a look at our plugin. We hope you enjoy it, whatever else your message might say. And then what we actually do uh, in our plugin is we don't delete the option. We're just going to give an example. But it is a best practice to get, go ahead and remove that option. Like you said, that kind of house cleaning. Get rid of all that junk that you're no longer going to be sort using. Of, sort of kosher, sort of the, the right thing to do, the right way to do things. Exactly. In practice. Um, so what we're doing in, our, in the case of our plugin um, is on the deactivation hook, just to show you guys an example, right. we're removing that option. But technically, like I said, uh, and, and like you said, it's sort of the right way to remove the option you know, right after it's been used in this case because we don't need it anymore. The plugin's been activated and we're no longer going to use that option. Um, the only other thing that I want to mention uh, is that the register deactivation hook does take in the same parameters as register activation okay. hook, just takes a different function name because obviously one is for activating, one is for deactivating. And then we have that uninstall hook. Um, there's kind of a, like a workaround around this. Um, it's, there is a function out there called register uninstall hook. It can be a little complicated to, to use in my experience. So they've actually come up with another way. If you include a file in your plugin directory called uninstall.php, this file will be run when the plugin is uninstalled. So it's inside of this file that you want to go ahead and clean up any database entries, tables you may have created, options you may have stored, settings, anything like that. Because it's typically assumed that when the user is uninstalling their plugin, um, your, or your plugin or any plugin that they're probably not going to need that data anymore, right? They're, they're saying, well, you know, um, I'm getting rid of this plugin for X, Y, and Z reasons, so I might not need but it. There, but there is always that option in case your plugin is a special case where you created content of some sort or something was there that could be used beyond the plugin. Yes, exactly. To, so, to retain it there. Yeah, so you may not want to always remove it, but it could be a good practice. Depends on your needs. Um, you know, in our case, we are definitely removing some of, right. some of no, our options. Nobody would have any you know. need for sort of like the links or whatever else might be in there with the social media share button beyond having it because... You can't use it. Yeah, exactly. Just it only works with, with our plugin. Yeah. But your your mileage may vary, of right. course. Mm -hmm. So cool. um so yeah, that's uh that's all these kind of special activation, deactivation, <laughs> uninstall hooks. <laughs> More hooks, right? Very cool. We've taken you from the start, the introduction of plugin development through creating basic actions filters, sort of what they mean, what that's like, custom short codes. Now we're taking it all the way to home with the start <laughs> and finish of the activation and deactivation hooks. I think what we're going to do is uh, next time uh, we're going to kind of do a little recap, a little wrap up of plugin development. So you kind of take a quick look, maybe mention some stuff we didn't mention before or didn't have time to and finish it up. Thank you so much, Scott, for being on the show as always. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate, really it. appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, as always, folks, please subscribe to us, slickumstudio.com slash subscribe as we release great blog content like this. Um, newsletters, things like that, our new themes. Uh, kind of keep in the loop and we'll be able to send them right over to you. And of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to the big old red subscribe button on YouTube. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks.